Hi friends, welcome to another pour um, that is inspired by spring, specifically the beautiful um, white and pink flowers of the plum tree and the peach trees. Um, so um, plums, we have plum trees, we have two that are, actually we have three, um, two that are sort of the, the yellowish plums and then um, one that's purple plums. And then we have several, with um, kind of like 10 of them that are the native um, plums from New Mexico. And so those give us little tiny plums that are um, yellowish but they turn this bright magenta uh, red when they're about to go rotten. And it's that sweet spot between the canary yellow, kind of really orangey, um, and the plum, uh, the plum color, um, um, which is kind of like a magenta or like crimson, that they taste so delicious. Like, Oh, they're just so amazing. Now, we don't always get actual fruits from there, or we do get fruits, but, like, the birds will get to them before we can have any. But when we do get to um, have some, it is quite the treat. I don't know if you've ever had those. Um, we actually bought that tree from the environmental um, agency department. I'm, I'm not, I forget what it's called, but basically... Um, the role of that department in New Mexico is just to get people to plant more trees. And so they sell these trees. Um, they sell them um, at um, discounted rates. So they're like rates that they are sold to like um, um, nurseries, but they sell to the public. Um, so the idea is just for them to provide the trees and for citizens in New Mexico to just plant more trees. And, but I mean, we still pay for them and, you know, we pay for shipping and stuff like that. But, um, the trees are native to, um, New Mexico or to the areas where we live. And yeah, so it's a fantastic program. Um, so if you live in New Mexico, one trees kind of look into that. Um, I mean, they're not free, but um, they're less expensive. And the beautiful part is that they're native trees. So they're going to do well in this area. So we also have a bunch of pine trees and stuff like that. But um, we also have a bunch of peach trees. And right now, you you can only imagine the aroma of just walking outside is just fantastic. So, yeah. So super inspired by um, my walk outside with my nephew. Um, and... Um, so yeah, so, uh, what I was trying to achieve in the middle of this straight pour was, um, uh, a lot of little fingerlings, but not, um, not the, uh, not the fingerlings and they're kind of like long, but like tighter, um, uh, more rounded ones to kind of give me the idea of, um, these little flowers that are on different branches of a peach tree or a plum tree and, um, so hopefully um, the little, um, the work that I did towards the end of the straight pour, hopefully it's going to work out. It looks like it might. Um, I tried to do um, <laughs> the idea of like a flower, kind of like the little petals, like circle, little circles around um, itself. And I hope it's not, um, it doesn't make it look too busy, like. I hope um it does look kind of like a um like a a branch with a lot of um of these beautiful fragrant um peach flowers they're so beautiful um hopefully um you know all these dust storms that we're having will not have a huge effect on our ability to get flower um fruits this year. Um, because sometimes that happens. Now, I'm using the Lazy Deborah because I want to keep um, the composition. And I found that for me, um, the best way to kind of do that is by, instead of tilting, by using the Lazy Deborah. Now, um, I think 
I don't know if you can kind of see from here, but look at this. So I have like the white plum ones uh, on one side and the peach um, kind of pink, more pink one on the other side. Um, I'm loving this. It kind of also reminds me of Spinal Tap, um, the pour that I did that reminded me of the Frida Kahlo self-portrait of, um, you know, the one where... Um, when she just had the trolley accident and so she drew like herself and then in the middle her spinal column and then like broken it's just a stunning piece that i saw you know at uh which what was it galeria de la raza in uh san francisco no it was at the mexican museum in San Francisco. Now, I don't know if it's still there um, because it was in Fisherman Wharf and they were, you know, they've always been pressured to like move out of the area because it's so expensive there and stuff. So hopefully it's still there. Um, it was a fantastic place to like really look at fantastic art. And my friend who was my co-worker at the Chicano Studies Library, um, which at the time was in Wheeler Hall at, at Berkeley, um, he was, um, he ended up going to the Smithsonian to study and then got a job at the Mexican Museum, which is why I discovered this museum and it just, I'm in awe of it. Hopefully it's still there. Um, uh, but anyhow, so here I am, I finished my pour and so I decided to keep a little bit of the aqua blue on top as the a negative space. Um, and because I tilted a little bit. It gave me a bit of a peek up here, but that kind of works because, um, you know, we're out here in the desert, but there's a number of different um, mountains around and they're kind of rocky mountains. And so when you're looking at them from far away, they look super purple. Um, specifically, I'm thinking like the Oregon mountains over like on one side is Las Cruces and the other side is the white, um, white sands, the missile range. Um yeah, so they look super purple and then against that super blue uh, sky. So this kind of reminds me of that. So this could be like an, a fruit orchard um, and like the gold part is the land. So you're kind of looking at the land. I mean, you're on the land, right? On one side, you can turn around, you can see the fruit orchard. And then if you turn around on the other side, then you'll see this beautiful purple mountain. So... Yeah, I'm loving it. I think um, it does justice to this beautiful, beautiful blooms that are coming up in um, spring. Might be a little too early, but hopefully not. Um, also, we don't need that much fruit too. So usually when, um, when our fruits, trees uh, give us a lot of fruit, we take it to the second harvest food bank and they just put them out in like baskets. And people can just take as many as much as they want. So that kind of works out. And we also do a lot of canning, which is something that I learned when I moved here. Now, let me take you in for a close up because this is a stunning piece. Like, even if I wasn't thinking of like the um, peach um, tree flowers, this by itself would have been a beautiful piece. Um, so, yeah, so here, as you, uh, you can kind of see how I was trying to do the petals of the. Of the flowers on the last row that I um, that I poured, and it looks really beautiful. Um, well, I hope you you think it's beautiful too. I really do love it, and I'm hoping this is gonna uh, dry um, beautifully as well. No cracks and minimal um, bubbles, air bubbles. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't used Haley recently. Um, she has had some issues, so I'm trying to figure out how to fix her. Um, but yeah, and I love these little um bits. So I'm thinking this has to do the little dots have to do with the canvas that I'm using. Um, and I'm loving them, so I'm not wanting to change that at all. Um, yeah, I really do enjoy to see those little tiny, um, I mean, they're not cells. I'm not sure what to call them, but 
I love that it gives me like a sense of like movement, kind of like fireflies during the summer or maybe more like the fall. I don't recall exactly when the fireflies come out, but yeah. So this is my f inspiration. I think I got pretty close. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.